Happy Sabbat po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. Kami po'y natuto at nagagalak na tayo po ay nagsama-samang muli upang magbalik ng ating papurit pasasalamat po sa ating pong Panginoon. Bago po tayo magpatuloy na ah, magpatuloy, ay simulan po natin sa magitan ng panalangin. Happy manalangin. Amang banala makapangyarihan sa lahat, Panginoon. Alam po namin na kayo po ay nasa kalagit na namin ngayon. Kaya nararapat lamang po na aming pong maibalik ang aming papurit pasasalamat sa inyo sa magitan ng pag-awit. Pananalangin at pakikinig ng inyo pong mga salita na ako, Panginoon, ay mangusap ko sa aming mga puso. At naway gabihin kami sa aming pag-worship. Ito lang po ang aming samadalangin sa matamis sa Panginoon Yesus. Amen. Awitin po natin ang All Hail the Power of Jesus Name, hymn number 127. 127. Maligayang happy, happy Sabad po sa ating lahat. Tayo po ay dadako na sa ating ikalawang servisyo. Amin pong inaanyayahan ng lahat ay magsiipo na. At tayo po ay magalang na sasamba sa ating Panginoon. Um, nais ko pong uh, basahin ang mga ilang pagbabago sa ating uh, programa ngayong umaga. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. Ang atin pong musical offering ay ipagkakaloob po sa atin ni Sister Zabira Winona Acosta. Ngayon po ay um, ihanda po natin ang ating mga puso't isipan sa pakikinig ng banal na salita ng ating Panginoon. Ating pong buksa ng ating mga banal na kasulatan, ito po ay matatagpuan sa mga awit 105, 1 and 2. O magpasalamat kayo sa Panginoon, Kayo'y magsitawag sa kaniyang pangalan. 
Ipabatid ninyo ang kaniyang mga gawain sa mga bayan. Magsiawit kayo sa kaniya. Magsiawit kayo sa kaniya ng mga pagpupuri. Salitain ninyo ang lahat niyang kagilagigilalas na mga gawa. Tayo po ay magsitayo sa pag-awit ng Holy, Holy, Holy. Ay po'y magsiluhod. Let's sing It's a Sabbath. Maraming banal, maraming salamat sa pagkakataon na inyong binigay sa amin nawa ang banal na spirito ang manguna sa amin at ang makatabi namin sa aming mga upuan ay ang mga piling anghel upang malaman namin ang inyong mensahe sa umagang ito. Alang-alang po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Malakias 3, 8 to 10. 
Nga nakawan baga ng tao ang Diyos, ngayon may ninanakaw ninyo ako. Ngunit inyong sinasabi, sa ano ka namin ninakawan? Sa mga ikasampung bahagi at sa mga handog. Dalhin ninyo ang buong ikasampung bahagi sa kamalig upang magkaroon ng pagkain sa aking bahay at subukin ninyo ako ngayon sa bagay na ito. Sabi ng Panginoon ng mga hukbo, kung hindi ko bubuksan sa inyo ang mga dungawan sa langit at ihulog ko sa inyo ang isang pagpapala na walang sapat na silid na kalalagyan. Ngayon po, lilikumin na na ating jakono at jakonisa ang ating mga ikasampung bahagi.
tayo po manalangin. Makapangyarihan namin Diyos na may ari ng aming buhay. Kami po ay lubos na nagpapasalamat sa mga kabuhayan na ipinagkakaloob niyo sa bawat isa sa amin. Ang, ito pong aming binabalik po namin ang ikampo at ikasampung bahagi at mga handog upang mabuksan at magamit sa ipagpapatuloy ng inyong gawain upang maiparahatid ang inyong banal na salita sa buong sanlibutan. At kung magagayon ang aming matagal na hinihintay na inyong pangalawang pagdating ay maganap na upang kami ay samasamang magmana ng inyong kaharian. Ito po ang samo namit dalangin. Umaasa po kami na ito ay aming tinanggap na hindi sa aming karapatan kundi alang-alang sa pangalan ng Panginoong Isus. Amen. Let's sing our theme song, One in Christ. As we trance of heavenly music, dance in one harmonious song, so the members of Christ's body in bless you. Ang mensahe po sa umagang ito ay matatagpuan sa Revelation 14, verse 3 to 4. Inaanyayahan ko po ang lahat na kung kayo po ay may dalang Bible, ay buksan po at sabay-sabay po tayong uh, magbasa. Revelation uh, 13, uh, 14, verse 3 to 4. Verse 3. They sang as it all were a new song before the throne before the four living creatures. And the elders, and no one could learn the song except for the hundred and forty-four thousand who were redeemed from the earth. Verse 4, These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. 
these were redeemed from among men, being first fruit to God and to the Lamb. I repeat, verse, uh, 14, verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 3 to 4. They sang as it were a new song before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders, and no one could learn the song except the hundred and forty-four thousand who were redeemed from the earth. These are the ones who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among them, being first fruit to God and to the Lamb. Tayo po ay lumuhod at i-prepare ang ating sarili. Mandaki lang nasa langit. Maraming salamat po sa araw ng Sabat na ito na kami po ay nagtipon-tipon upang ang papurit pa salamat ay aming ibalik sa inyo. Maraming salamat din po sa isang linggo na kami po ay inyong ginabayan at iningatan. Maraming salamat din po sa mga pagpapala na inyo pong laging pinagkakalob sa amin. Ngayong araw na po nito ay inaanya namin ang inyong presensya na nandito po sa aming kalagitnaan. Hiniling po rin namin ang Holy Spirit na siyang gumabay po sa uh, aming pong speaker na si Pastor Marfil Santiago na siya po yung ginamit upang ihat ihatid sa amin ang mensahe ng pag-asa. Hiniling po rin namin na buksan niyo po ang is isip at puso ng bawat sa amin upang ang mensahe ng pagpapala ay tunay namin makamtan at ito po ay maging pagpapala sa aming buhay. Maraming salamat din po sa kalusugan na binigay niyo po sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat din po sa pagpapatawat sa aming mga pagkukulang. Alam po namin na kami po ay hindi karapat-dapat na lumapit sa inyong paanan. Ngunit sa inyong pag-ibig sa amin, kami po ay inarin niyong banal. Maraming maraming salamat po sa mga pagtugon niyo po sa panalangin ng bawat sa sa amin. Ang lahat at papuri at pasasalamat po ay ibinabalik namin sa matamis na panangalan ni Jesus. Amen.
Happy Sabbath po sa ating lahat. Ang part ko po ngayong umaga ay para ipakilala po ang ating guest speaker. Yan. Nung Wednesday po, nung tinext po ako ni Ate Jade, na-approach po niya ako, pwede bang ikaw ang magpakilala sa ating guest speaker? Sabi ko po sa kanya, sino po ba yung ating guest speaker? Sabi po niya sa akin ay si Pastor Marfield Santiago. And then sabi ko po sa kanya, ate, pwede po bigyan niyo po ako ng info about sa kanya kasi hindi ko po siya kilala. And then, kagabi lang po, nung binabasa ko yung research, uh, nung resource uh, speaker natin, kagabi ko lang po nalaman na ang nickname po pala ni Pastor Mark ay Marfil. Yan. Kasi po sa uh, office po, hindi po namin siya kilala as Marfil. Kilala po namin siya pag nag-uusap po kami sa office. So, okay na ba yung documents ni Pastor Mark? Or sinong Mark? Kasi mas raming Mark sa Aya. Sasabihin lang po namin si Pastor Mark Felix. Hindi po namin alam na Marfil po pala yung nickname niya. So kagabi ko lang po nalaman. <laughs> Yan. So si Pastor 
Marfil po, yan. Pwede ko na po siyang tawagang Mar Pastor Marfil kasi alam ko na po na Marfil yung nickname niya. Si Pastor Marfil po ay nagtapos ng kanyang BA Linguistics sa UP Diliman at nag-graduate din po siya ng kanyang uh, Master of Divinity sa AYAS ngayon lang pong March 2017 and currently po ay siya po ay kumukuha ng uh, PhD in Religion um, Emphasis in Historical and Theological Studies. At ang kanya pong butihing may bahay ay si Mrs. Kimberly Santiago. Yan. Atin pong ibigay sa kanya ang pagkakataon. Magandang umaga po. Ako po ay hindi pa pastor, pero palagi si uh, Pastor Jade sinasabing pastor. At sa ayas, ganun na yung naging kagawian kasi hindi mo kilala kung Pastor Bato, taga South Africa, kung ganyan. So, almost everyone, you call each other pastor. Thank you, Sister Melody. And uh, my emphasis is New Testament. Baka mali na naman yung document natin. <laughs> Not historical, theological. Okay. So, this morning, I'd like to thank you for giving me the opportunity. And this is a very rare opportunity for me to speak in front of professionals and those who are responsible for the music in the church because I am not a musician myself. I'm not a professional musician. I like music. I play several instruments. Uh, as many, many ch children who grew in an Adventist family, right? Palagi tayong may violin, piano, recorder, any other uh, musical instrument. And this is our heritage, I think. And so this morning, I like to thank you really because it's almost impossible for a person like me to speak to a congregation like you music leaders but i like to bring a message today that i i believe and i am convicted that will benefit all of us i entitled this the triad in adventist music And as we know, kanina pagdating po namin, you are uh, doing your Music Theory 1 and Music Theory 2, which is uh, um, your singing and your reading notes, your sight reading and all. And a triad is to start, let's just deal with this. Okay lang bang bumaba ako? No, here. It's a set of three notes that are stacked vertically together. And... Um, in thirds, vertical in thirds, and each contributing to form a harmonic chord. And what's interesting in a tonic triad, I'm not a musician, I'm not a music theorist, but I'm sure you know this. The three notes must always come in the same relative point, relative position to each other. So they always come in three. And you cannot have one without the other, and you cannot have one above the other or below the other. The, the tonic of the note must always be the lowest pitch, the lowest note. That's the property of a tonic triad. So this is a tonic triad in C major, right? So you have the three notes there. Oh, practice nyo yung kanina. What's this note? C. What? E. G. Yeah. So C, E, G, which is... Uh, basically a C major chord. So that's the triad. Now that we know in music what the triad is, I'd like to adapt this idea because the term triad is actually, it's, it's a general term. It simply means a composition of three elements, right? And uh, I'd like to use that. First, let's look at what King David has to say. He says, he has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. The new song, which our sister read this morning in Revelation, did you notice in Revelation the, the sentence structure there? It says they were, singing a new, they were singing a song as if it was a new song. That means it was, it's not necessarily completely new in Revelation, which is in the future, for the 144,000, but they were singing it as if it were a new song. So the concept of a new song in the Bible is very important. It's, 
very prevalent from Moses to David. And this is what David has to say about this new song. And this is mis uh, a little bit mysterious because we know that Moses has a song and then David is referring to a new song and that concept of a new song is also present in Revelation, which is basically our chapter as Adventists, right? Revelation 14. And that new song is there. And so we wonder, what is this new song that nobody knows except the 144,000? So that's interesting for us. But at least two properties of a song for the Lord would be this. When we hear a song like that, this new song, many will see it and fear God, which is the theme in Revelation 14. But not only that, and many also will trust in the Lord. By the way, since this is also in music, right? So this is poetry. In, 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 in Psalms, it is always written in parallels. They call it parallelism. So this is called a syn synonymous parallelism. So if you have there, he has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. And then the next line would be something similar. That means it's an expansion of what this new song is all about. It could be a synonym or it could be an additional idea. And so when we hear, when David says he has put a new song in my mouth, we know that when he talks about many will see it and fear God, it is about this song. And not only that, this song, when this is heard or observed or seen or witnessed, many will trust in the Lord. It's the end of this lecture. When we sing a song to the Lord, if we keep these three, two properties, that many will be rebuked of their sins and also many will be encouraged, then we are singing rightly to God. But let's move maybe 1,500 years after. Exactly on October 2031, you know, right? Exactly how many years now? 500 years after who? Martin Luther, what? Nailed the 95 Thesis in the, they said, the door of the Wittenberg Church. 500 years. And that's the Reformation. That's who we are. But Martin Luther is not all about Romans. Martin Luther is not all about grace and, and, and salvation by faith. Martin Luther has to say about music. First, he reformed the liturgy, which is the Catholic Church, by, uh, by according full importance to the sermon and community singing. If you notice that for Protestants, what is important for us, whether you know it or not, is the sermon, that's because of Martin Luther. Because for the Catholic, the liturgy, the most important part of the liturgy, which is the worship, liturgy in, 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 in Greek means service, actually. The program or the service, the most important for the Catholic when they say they have worshipped God is the ostia. Alam niyo yung ostia? Kung hindi nila mapakinggan yung sermon ni Padre, okay lang, basta makapila sila sa ostia and they feel okay na, pwede na silang magsabong pagkatapos. Because that's the most important. They have felt that they have worshipped God. They have, they have partaken of what God is all about. But for the Reformed movement, for us, it is the divine. That's why we call it the divine worship. It is the sermon. Martin Luther gave tremendous importance to the preaching of the word because he said, this is the bread. The real bread. Kaya kung hindi kayo nakikinig ng sermon, you're missing the entire basis of our reformed faith. Because this is our worship. Kaya kung yung sermon natin, kung ano-ano yung ginagawa, nag-i-invite nag ng networking or whatever, that's not what it is. This is the preaching of the Word of God. And secondly, he emphasized choral singing as an assertion of faith 
and a spiritual commentary on biblical text. I was really glad that while I was here, you know, in our churches when we sing, uh, it's okay. Right? The angels sing with us. But here this is especially, I don't know if you've noticed it, but this, is, this crowd is especially uh, uh, nice because, marvelous, because most of you are, well, musicians in your churches or your teachers. And so when you're seeing the responses, when you're seeing the songs, it, really, it is really pleasing. I, I hope you can hear yourself, and I hope somebody is recording this. Well, we have a camera. I hope somebody is recording this. So it's a marvelous, marvelous um, opportunity for us to come together. After theology, this is what Martin Luther has to say. Look at this, especially those who are in, in ministry, mga pastor. After theology, I accord to music the highest and the greatest honor. We see that David and all the saints use verse, rhymes, and songs to express their godly thoughts because music reigns in days of peace. This is a, a letter by Martin Luther. Look at this. Martin Luther, actually, Martin Luther studied music not because he wanted to do music, but in, in those times, when you go to higher education, after your primary education, you study everything. You want to be a doctor, you study everything. You want to be a lawyer, you study everything. You, you want to be a professor, you study everything. Because they don't have a multidisciplinary um, set of courses like we have now. Diba? Ngayon may mga very specialized course like uh, it, it, it always give um, chuckles to me when I uh, remember one course that I learned before, uh, office management. So what, what's your course? Oh, Bachelor of Science in Office Management. Office management? So what are you doing in office management? Well, it's very specialized. Like, you know, the position of the cubicles, the tables, how important are the lighting, those kind of things. Very specialized. But during the times of Martin Luther and John Calvin, they had to study everything, and he studied music. And as you know, Martin Luther wrote several songs that we still sing today. The most uh, famous would be a mighty fortress, right? So that's Martin Luther. Let's go to Ellen White. Music was made to serve a holy purpose, to lift the thoughts to that which was pure and noble and elevating and to awaken in the soul devotion and gratitude to God. So music is, remember, Ellen White, this is chapter 32 of Councils to the Church. Ellen White didn't say church music. She didn't say sacred music or gospel music. She just simply said, music is created by God to serve a holy purpose. So don't tell me that hindi naman Sabado ngayon, kaya okay lang tong music na to, na hindi masyadong banal. Pag Sabado, no! It's music itself that is invented, not church music. In heaven, there's no church. Everything is about worship. The lives of the angel is all about worship. And so music, when it was invented, it wasn't invented for anything else but for worship, for a holy purpose. Music for, This is in the second paragraph. Music forms part of God's worship in the courts above, and we should endeavor in our songs of praise to approach as nearly as possible to the harmony of the heavenly choirs. We know it's impossible. Ellen White talks about a vision when she was in heaven and she was witnessing and hearing the singing of the angelic choirs. And she said, it's just so marvelous. If you notice, I use the word marvelous a lot because yesterday I was reading up on some linguistics and then I realized in corpus linguistics, the word marvelous is used one in every 10,000 times in the English language because the word awesome is used one in every 1,000 times. So, palagi na lang daw kawawa naman yung word na marvelous. So, dapat we use marvelous, baka mawala siya. Well, she heard the marvelous chorus and then when she was brought back, kasi nasa vision yon. Tapos, she heard the sing, because she was in the church, she heard the singing of the church, which is actually probably good. But she was like, it was so rough and so far from the angelic choir. And so she said, kapag tayo, mga kapatid, ay kumakanta, tumutugtug ng instrumento, at ano pa mang ginagawa natin sa music, natin sa church, dapat wag tayong magsasettle ng okay na yan. This is what 
and I know there will be a lot of lectures in this festival, but I like to say this. You know what? One of the gripes I have for our church is we don't have a dedicated music team for our church. We don't pay attention to the music. We don't even rehearse. You know, I, I, I met people from the CCC, for example, Christian Christ Commission, something like that, Christ Commission Church or something like that, and VCC, VCF and those other churches now, their music team, they meet on, on, on like Thursday, I met them on Thursday, and I said, oh, because they were buying one of the things I'm selling, I said, oh, why are you doing this? Oh, we have a rehearsal. Rehearsal, you have a concert? No, we have a worship tomorrow, which is uh, Friday morning, they had a worship. I said, oh, they have a rehearsal. To sabi ko, are you like, like performing? Is it a concert? No, 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 we're leading the church. And I was like, wow. They're re- the music team, those who will do the chorister, the pianist, and the visual, they rehearse because they know it's important to lead the church into worship. Tayo, sinong kakanta? Ah, wala eh. Si ano na lang, hanapin mo si... Sabihin mo, ikaw na lang kumanta. Tama po ba? Ano yung sabi ni Martin Luther? After theology, he accords to music the highest and the greatest of importance. But Seventh-day Adventists, although we uphold Martin Luther, we forget what he taught about music. Sana itong sa Cavite, ano? magbago yung mga music ministry natin. Seryosohin nyo. And this is what we're going to talk about a little bit later. And then, the latest music guideline of the Seventh-day Adventist Church states, we believe, and I'm sure you know this, and I hope you've read this. This is available online anyway. And I hope someone else will discuss this uh, during this occasion because you're all music leaders and you should be able to know what the music guidelines are. We believe that the gospel impacts all areas of life. We therefore hold that given the vast potential of music for good or ill, we cannot be indifferent to it. First, we have to settle with this. I was speaking to a friend years ago. He, she's an Adventist, but she doesn't believe in, like, we should have different kinds of music for the church. And she, she's okay with, for example, like, you know, drums and pop style music in the church because she said, that's, a, you know, that's music. And I just simply asked her, I said, so do you, don't you put any limitation like, for example, it's if, if a band would come to your church and it's a rock band, like with long hair and then heavy metal, like, ah, 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 you know, uh, screamo, they call it screamo. But they said they're a Christian group. Would you accept that in your Adventist church? And she said, probably not. See, that's the point. We have to agree first because now we, we disagree on whether, you know, drums can be used in the church, whether we can sing uh, uh, heel song songs, right? Uh, whether we can sing Don Moen songs, you know, people need the Lord. We, we debate that. And there are some pastors who say, you know, it's okay. And there are some pastors who say, okay. If you go to other churches, like international churches, you will hear a lot of music that for Filipinos, we will be like, oh, why aren't you singing like that? Why aren't you dancing when, when they're singing? So it's, it's you know, it's, it's a debate. But at least what we, while we're discussing this, because this is, this is probably going to continue the discussion in music in our church for several more years until you guys, the, mus- the musicians in the church, would really mature in the ministry, in your ministry, and would come up with a united front of what we, where we stand. But at least at this point, we should accept that we cannot be indifferent to music. Not all music, at least we understand, not all music is acceptable for our church. Seventh-day Adventist music making means to choose the best and above all to draw close to our Creator and Lord and glorify Him. Choose the best. Pag hindi masyadong maganda yung kanta, you don't choose that. Not because it's okay. Let us rise to the challenge. This is from our church, by the way. Rise to the challenge of a viable alternative musical vision 
and to make a unique Adventist musical instrument uh, contribution. And what do we find in Advent? I mean, hindi ko nila lahat, but what do we find? What we do is we just copy from Hillsong or we just copy from, from other churches. And then this is our philosophy of music, 2004. This is in the General Conference. This is voted, by the way, voted by the General Conference. And we aim to create a unique Adventist music. Na, naririnig nyo na po ba yung, oh, I wish I remember this. The, the Dating Daan Church, uh, MCGI, Members Church, Church of God International, they have an annual music festival where they encourage, supposedly it's open to all, pero sila sila rin din naman yon. But the good thing about this is they encourage composers in their church to compose songs and they, they are now running on its, I think, fifth or sixth year now. Uh, they call it a music of song and I forgot what they call it, okay? Um, but we don't have something like that. We have? Oh, we have. Very good. Sorry. But what my point is, they kind of can create a distinct dating daan music. Because they're composing and composing, and this is, by the way, it's a composition, and they have Rani Raimundo judging, and you know other celebrities judging. Gary Valenciano is there sometimes, but at least they're trying to. Oh, now when you hear this song, dalakong nakalimbag sa aking katawan. Narinig niyo ba yon? Ang mga turo ni Jesus na magpakailan paman. This is a song composed by Eli Soriano himself. It's very good. It's from a, It's from the scripture. And when pag, nagsasal, pag nagsasalita siya, lagi niya minsan kinakanta yun. Diba? But, you know, they have something distinct. Yeah, of course, now, I'm happy. We have, for example, the Neblet family, right? They're creating music. And that's really Adventist. You can, you can hear from the music bed, from the lyrics, that that's really Adventist. It's not just an adaptation. And this is what we need to aim. This is what you need to aim. When you're composing, when you're singing, you must aim for an alternative musical vision. Don't get a song from the outside and then put it here and then say, well, that's okay. No, that's not alternative. That's not in keeping with our philosophy. And what else? We have to make a unique Adventist musical Contribution. What that would sound, I don't know. I'm not a musician. I'm not a composer. What does an Adventist music sound? I'm not really sure yet. But we need to subscribe to this idea as musicians that we as a church must be unique in our music. So let's go to the triad. As we said, this is the tonic, right, of the triad. This is like the bass. But we will proceed first with this. The first of the triad, when you have music, when, as I said, people debate, uh, shall we have this music? Uh, people need the Lord. Shall we sing it? And I said, yes. But you know, in the 60s, or uh, no, 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 in the 80s, that was actually uh, a Don Moen song. And uh, 80s people don't like it because it's like the Hillsong now. So when we sing Hillsong songs now, then 20 years from now, that will be okay. And so, is it with the music? Is it with the sound, with the lyrics? Is it with the instrument? Do we use bass guitar? Do we use drums? All of that, as I said, this debate is going to continue for several years. But this is what I can share. For me, it's just a matter of three things. That's why I said triad. And these three things should always come together, like a triad. Number one, you must have music, which is godly. So when I say music here, I'm talking about the sounds. I'm talking about the instrumentation. So it must be godly music. How do we know if it's godly music? Well, I suggest three criteria. Number one, as one sound. When the temple was built by Solomon in 2 Chronicles, right? And the Ark of the Covenant is going to be placed in the new temple, this is what happened when the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praise the Lord saying, for he is good, 
for His mercy endures forever, that the house, the house of the Lord, was filled with a cloud. The first, when we say, is it a godly... The, well, I'm not talking about the lyrics. I'm talking about the sound, the melody, the music, the, the accompaniment. It should be as one. Hindi kung saan-saan napupunta. And then, it must not only be as one sound, it must also be in harmony. We, ha we, he we have this in Psalms 150, the last chapter of Psalms. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. What else? With the lute and the harp. What else? With the timbrel and the dance. If you have any questions about dance, ask me later. What, what does it mean? With stringed instruments and with flutes. Oh, we have stringed instrument and flute kanina. Yung very good music. And with the loud cymbals and clashing cymbals. But they must be in harmony. Okay, first, it must be as one and in harmony. So that's the first. When, how do we know if the music is godly? It must be as one. It must be in harmony and the final product must be praise the Lord for the Lord is good. Sing praises to His name for it is pleasant. If you hear a song that is not pleasant to the ears, either because it's rock or whatever, probably that's not a godly music. Right? If you hear other songs that's not pleasant to the ear, that's why I, I don't like to, to speak a lot about the hymns here, but because we have musicians here, and they would tell you how important and how marvelous our hymns are, and they are composed according to certain principles. We go to the next, which is the lyrics. So the first in the triad is the music. You must examine, is the music okay? Can we put this drum here? Can we put that drum there? Can we put bass guitar? And we have those three um, guidelines. But the second one is we have to examine the lyrics. And the lyrics must be edifying. So you look at the lyrics. The first, how do we know if the lyrics is edifying the church, edifying you? The first is, when you sing, O come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. I will sing of your love and justice to you, Lord. I will sing praise. There must be a what? A clear object of the song. You lift me up when I am in darkness. You raise me up. Sorry, synonym naman yun eh. Lift. You raise me up. Na 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 na. Right? But is it clear who that message is about? Is it clear? If you look at the lyrics, do you know who is the referent of you in you, lift me, in you Raise Me Up? Did it mention in any way? No, it's not clear. So it can be your father. That's why they use it dun sa mga, you know, yung quadrapelagic na athlete tapos kinakagas siya ng tatay niya. Because it could be about the father or it could be about your, probably your wife or your spouse. So number one, how do we know if the lyrics is Adventist? There must be a clear message, a clear object. Number two, it must be communicative. Bakit? Sabi sa Hebrews, speaking to one on Ephesians, is speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, in spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. How do they speak to one another? By psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. What? Is this what Paul is saying? Yes. When you speak to each other, you speak to each other in songs and music. That means music, Adventist lyrics must be communicative. You are communicating something. You are imparting something. Don't just sing... <clears throat> This is the spirit. Oh, okay. Let, let, let me remind that, be, remember that later. 
But the idea is, if you go to Hillsong Church, for example, and you look at the music, you will see that most of the lyrics are just generic Christian lyrics. Like, the Spirit of the Lord is here, the Spirit of the Lord is here, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Then they repeat that over and over again in, in one, maybe two, three minutes part of the song. And then it goes, you know, it increases in, in, in intensity. The Spirit of the Lord is with the Spirit of the Lord. There's no communication there. You're communicating. The, 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 singing, the singers are saying something with their song, with the lyrics. That's when we say it's an edifying lyric. So, when you compose your songs, there must be a message. As like an essay, there must be a thesis statement. So, music must have a thesis also. Finally, in edifying lyrics, you must have let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another again, this is Paul, in psalms and hymns and spiritual singing or spiritual songs. So your songs, your lyrics must be wise. Dapat matalino yung lyrics mo. Dapat you, you know how to, if you're writing in Tagalog, dapat meron kang magandang, you know, grasp sa Tagalog language and imagery. You know? And maybe even symbolism. Kung wala, pumunta ka sa Biblia ang Tagalog. O kaya pumunta ka sa magandang balita Biblia, tapos dun sa Psalms. Kasi ang pagkakaliwat dun, ang pagkakatranslate dun, maganda. Parang tula talaga. And then you can actually use that. Lapatan mo ng music. So dapat matalino. Hindi kung ano-ano lang yung kinakan... Ano yung point ng kanta mo? Maganda lang yung sound. Pero yung lyrics, hindi matalino. And finally, this is our last. Conse consecration. So number one in my triad is this. How do we know if it's an Adventist music? I will look at the music. Is the music appropriate? Medyo himba yung pagkaka, yung tune niya, yung beat niya. May break beats ba? May back beats ba? Yung, yung syncopation niya, medyo subdued ba yung syncopation o syncopated all the way? Diba yung uh, How Great the uh, yeah, Power of Love. Syncopated all the way, diba? So, I uh, will look at the music, number one. Number two, I will examine the lyrics. Is the lyrics Adventist? What, is, is it clear what we're talking about? Is, is the music really for us? You know, there was one church that I attended to before, not Adventist, and they were singing... 25 years and my life is still and my world will make up of this brotherhood of man. And I said, why are you singing that? Because I know that song from a secular, you know, it's a secular music, it's a secular band. I said, well, because the lyrics is good. See, he reformed. He was a drug addict and after 25 years, he reformed. So we're singing. It. But that's not actually what we need. It's not consecrated. What do I mean by consecrated? When we look at a musical piece, Papakanta natin sa choir o oh, special number natin. As much as possible because professionals kayo. And this is what professionals do. You're trying to learn everything about your profession. Is this music? Who composed this? When was this composed? Why was this composed? Because, number one, according to Hebrews, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing. There must be a proper audience in mind. When the song is composed, the composer knows who the audience is, and it's the proper audience. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. So church for music must be composed for church goers in mind. So you cannot take 25 years in my life, something, something like that. You cannot take, there is sunshine when he comes. Na, 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 way. There is sunshine when he comes. And that when he comes, that's Jesus Christ now. But when that was composed, that's not, that's, that's not what the composer meant. So you look at the history of the piece that you're taking, and you look at the, con is this a consecrated piece? Number one is, does the composer or composers had proper audience in mind when they composed this? Is this for the church? Number two, is it undefiled? This is what our, 
our sister read. Look at this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. No one could learn that song except those who were redeemed from the earth. Who are these? These are the ones who were not defiled. The idea of defilement is associated with music. And so if the music is defiled, you don't use it anymore. I would say that. For example, my wife, when before our reformation, she loved Coldplay. And particularly, she loved the song, The Scientist. Come up to meet you. Tell you I'm sorry. Tell you how lovely you are. And she was singing it. And it was used in, in, the, in the movie Butterfly Effect. It was used in this love song. It was used in this. It was, used in this. It was even used for themes with sexual content. And then I found out that actually, sorry, not Coldplay. Coldplay? Yeah. It was actually composed for a church. And so now there are people who are using it. Well, you know, this is the gospel music, but it was already defiled. It was used in, in sexual context already. And, and if, it's okay if it's just one person who uses it, that's okay. But it's worldwide use, so you don't use it anymore. It has been defiled. So that's what it is. Third, every thought must be captive to the obedience of Christ. So, when you look at the consecration and in the music, and you look at the person composing, I'm not telling you to judge, but I'm telling you to evaluate. Who composed this? Oh, yung nag-compose nito, ano to eh, a drug addict siya. Pero at one point in his life, nagkaroon siya ng uh, epiphany and gusto niya magsulat ng song about God. And then, but look at the fruits of that composer. Ano yung fruits niya? Is he a servant of God? I'm not talking about Adventist only, but is that composer a servant of God? So we need to look at the person composing. Is that person, is, is the, are the thoughts of that person subject to Christ? If, if we get a song composed by Ogi al Kasid, right? And then we use it for our choir, or for our church, because the, mu the music is good, the lyrics is good. But is Ogi al Kasid? can we evaluate Ogi when he was composing din? Was, is his thought subject to Christ? I'm not asking you to judge, but I'm asking you to evaluate. Because you're professionals. If not, maybe it's not the right piece for your choir. So you analyze. You try to learn who they are. Yesterday, habang nagdi-dinner, sabat dinner kami ng wife ko, we were li listening to Fountain View Academy Choir, right? And then we love Fountain View. But then yes, we, were, we were really curious. So we studied about them. Who are they? Anong klaseng academy to? Anong, anong school? And then we even planned. We started planning na yung anak namin din mag-aaral. Tapos nalaman namin, ah, uh, 18,000 Canadian dollars. That's around 750,000 pesos per year. Sasabi ko, grade 10 daw umpisa. So mga, meron pa tayong mga 16, 15 years. Sabi ko sa asawa ko, pag natin para yung pantuition niya ng unang taon. Kasi gusto ko mag-aaral yung, ito pa ganun eh, yung future plans. Pero if, if you know, oh, sila yung kumakanta, ano ba sila? Ah, wow, look at them. Pag nakita mo yung vlog nila, yung girls and yung boys magkahiwalay. Sobrang conservative. Look at the choir. Tingnan mo yung mga Amerikano to. Tingnan mo yung damit nila. Conservative. Ano yung, anong, sa anong klase sila? Mga veg at least vegetarian. And uh, wow, you know, it's with the same mind. I like this. I like their music. I, li I, will, I will consume their music. Pero ito, Hillsong. Oh, one of the Hillsong pastors were caught in a bar with Justin Bieber. And they were drinking. And he was the pastor of Justin Bieber because Justin Bieber just joined the Hillsong Church and he wanted to build a, a Hillsong Church in America. And so his pastor, who was already now part of his concert, of his um, the, uh, you know, people around him, they went to a bar and then they were drinking. And, and not only drinking, Justin Bieber danced with a matured woman 
in a very provocative dance in that bar, and the pastor was there. And that pastor was the same song leader of that of his church. And so he composes songs. So you have to ito bang kinakanta natin na you are my all in all Jesus. This is a hill song song, right? I would like you to not oh it's good, it's beautiful, let's use it other church. No, you're professionals. Okay, before we use it, let's study what this song is about. Who are the composers? What are their lives? Because if their lives are not affected by their music, I don't want to use their music. Diba? Pupunta ka ba sa couturier? Pupunta ka ba sa manggagawa ng damit? Tapos nakita mo yung damit niya? Punit-punit? Diba hindi pwede? You know, yung lola ko, grandmother ko, ano siya, mananahi siya. Kaya yung, yung nung namatay siya, yung mga sa church namin, lahat mga nagsalita, laging ganun. Tapos nagulat kaming family kasi sabi nila, ah, si sister during po, lagi siyang kustu- kusturang-kustura. Mahayos lagi ang damit. Tapos saka namin naisip, ay, oo nga. And then they, they were reminded, kasi sabi ng mami, siyempre, sa stress, sa stress ba? Tawag, mananahi siya eh. O sa stress siya, mananahi siya. Alam naman, it's the same. These are musicians. Tapos yung music nila, ito yung product. Wow, ang ganda. Ano yung, ano yung epekto sa kanya? Ay, nagbabar siya? I'm not talking about theology. Kung hindi siya naniniwala kay Ellen White, that's not actually an issue. But we're talking about the fruit of Christianity. And finally, proper servants. And this is also for you, your musicians. In Numbers, in Chronicles, we find that the Levites were consecrated to do one thing and one thing only, to serve in the temple through music and other services. And so, if you are a musician, and you say that you are a musician to God, those children here who are playing the violin, who are playing the flute, and maybe the piano, if you tell God, God, I'm using my talent for you in the church, don't use it anywhere else because it's a consecrated talent. Can you imagine this? I know this is not a church. This is a school, right? But this is a church school. But let's pretend this is a church, and this is the mic of the church, and this is the pulpit. Can you imagine this? Yung elder, caretaker din siya, tapos pagka hindi Sabado, nagbibijoke silang mag-aasawa. Mag, mag-aasawa, ang dami, no? Magpapamilya. Tapos anong ginagamit nila? Yung projector ng church, tsaka yung mic. Is that okay? Eh sabi na, hindi naman, tatanggalin ko naman sa church, eh. Lalagay ko naman sa bahay namin, eh. Okay pa rin ba yon? Eh bakit yung anak nyo, nagva-violin sa church, tapos nagva-violin sa labas, o kaya kumanta sa labas, Bakit okay sa inyo? But yung anak nyo kumakanta sa church? Bow the knee. I'm not saying, I don't know that person, okay? Tapos biglang sumali sa singing contest sa ABS-CBN, Your Voice. Tapos kumakanta na siya ng pusong bato. Bakit okay sa inyo? Pina- wow, Adventist yun. Pinapalakpakan pa natin. Eh, ganun din yun. Ano yung instrument niya? Yung vocal voice niya, di ba? Ano yung instrument natin for sound? Yung microphone and everything else? Papahiram mo ba sa Vijoki House? No! Kasi sabi mo sa Panginoon yan eh. If you're a musician of God, an Adventist musician, consecrate yourself that you will not perform or do anything else that is not in accordance with our principles. I'm not saying na hindi ka kakanta sa labas, sa school, Diba? You can, obviously, because that's also a message. But what types of song are you going to sing? Anong... May gitarista tayo sa church, magaling. Tapos, member siya ng band. Na yung band na, na kinakanta nila, ballad, rock ballad na... That's probably not good. Because you're using your instrument... Either your vocal cords, vocal cords or, or your talent, your fingers, or everything else. And then you use it in the church, and then you use it elsewhere. So you have to be, guys, late brothers and sisters. What my challenge to you is, and this is not only from me, this is a challenge from the a philosophy of Seventh-day Adventist music, October 
13, 2004, voted by the General Conference. If you say you're a musician, you're a musician of the Lord only. You're not a musician of the world. So when you play your music, I'm not saying, again, this is not about, oh, wag kang magtugtug ng love song. That's not what I'm talking about. That's why I gave you the principles. Ano ba yung music niyan? Ano ba yung lyrics niyan? Lahat ba yan in accordance with our will? Because we can sing love songs. I think we can sing love songs. But is it too sexual na? And you know, you can analyze this. But the point is, put it in your heads that I am a musician of the Lord in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am consecrated to this. And so mga kapatid, this is the triad in the Adventist music which should be unique and should be energizing. So what are those? Can you remember? Kaya tinandaan ko eh. First, let's start with the tonic. C, which is consecration. So pag tinignan mo yung music na to, yung nag-compose ba nito, consecrated siya. Okay, good. Sunod. Edifying yung lyrics. Yung lyrics ba nito, nagpapataas ng ating spiritualidad. And finally, finally, G, godly yung sound, yung instrumentation, yung arrangement. And if we have this, according to David, in Psalms 40, verse 3, He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to the Lord. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. And I hope, brothers and sisters, that this morning will be a pivotal point in our musical career in the church. I know it doesn't pay to be a musical director in Seventh-day Adventist churches in the Philippines. I know in the States, they are somehow paid, you know, if you play the organ or the piano. But I know this is a voluntary work for you. But remember, it is God whom you are serving. So God is your boss. So if you say that you are a musician, a musician of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, follow the triad of the Adventist music and you will be guided accordingly. May the Holy Spirit be your teacher and your guide and your constant companion in your quest for a truly Adventist Christian music. Amen.
Let's all stand for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we have heard, sang, we are determined to serve our King as you have given us musical abilities, musical talents. We are determined to use them only for your service, for your glory. And may you bless us in this endeavor. We pray all of this and we ask that the Holy Spirit will be with us always. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Happy Sabbath po sa ating lahat.